In this video, we will get to know the Visual Studio work environment. As you can see here, Visual Studio has a lot of different windows. And in this video, we will take a closer look at those that are relevant to us when we develop console applications. So when you just installed Visual Studio and opened up the last project, you should have something that looked like this. So not all the windows are always relevant to us uh, when we are developing something. So you can always close down a window. So let's see, for example, we have the Solution Explorer here, and that one is relevant to us. And if you close that one down by mistake, let's say that we close it like this, then it disappears. Well, then we might want to have it back. So to reopen it, if you close something by mistake or you want something new, you can go to View, and then you can find the Solution Explorer here, and it will pop back up here. But for example, the Team Explorer here is not something I need right now, so I can close that one down and leave it closed. It's very important that you create a layout that you feel comfortable working in. So just because I have my window set up like this doesn't mean that you need to work the exact same way. For example, maybe you want your Solution Explorer to be in the bottom here and your properties up top. Um, or maybe you want it to be as it is here. But you can always grab the windows and move them around. As I said, it's important that you create an environment that you feel comfortable working in. So if you want to drag something around, then just hold the lift mouse down and then drag it wherever you want it to be. So we talked a little about the Solution Explorer in the last video. Again, this is the solution and this is our project. But we didn't talk about what we have down here. So here we have some properties for the project. They are not relevant right now, but we also have some references here. We will take a closer look at these when we start coding. But for now, just look at them as some functionality that is included in your project so that you can use it. Down here we have a program file and as you can see the program has a file extension called .cs which stands for C Sharp. And this file here is actually a C Sharp file that you could write some code in. As you can see the code file is over here. Program.cs and program is also written here. But we'll also take a closer look at that later. But as you can see everything that needs to have code written in it has the .cs extension over here. So a window that we don't see right here, but that is very important when you're coding is the error list. Basically, you can't really code without the error list because it's going to show you all the mistakes you're making and what you should change to make the code work. So if we go to view and find the error list here or press Control W E, then the error list will pop up down here. And this one is very, very important to you because you can see all the errors that you have in your code. For example, if we would go into the main um, method here and write something randomly like this you'll see that there will come a red squishy line and down here it will write what the error is it expects a semicolon and this doesn't exist right because it just writes wrote some gibberish here but as you can see the error list helps you with the amount of errors you have and it makes it easy for you to find them. let's say we are somewhere else in our code and I see hey I have an error here I can actually double click on the error for it to take me to the exact place where the error is. So this is something I see a lot when my students are writing code. They forget to put up the error list. So always have the error list shown when you're writing your code. It makes it way easier for you. And you can delete the gibberish again because we don't need to have that. So these were actually the few things that we were going to look at in this video. As you can see, it wasn't a lot. Um, so it isn't that scary to take a look at Visual Studio. As you can see, it wasn't a lot of windows that we need to take a closer look at. So these are the things that we need to know about to be able to use Visual Studio. So thanks for watching. Thanks for watching my video. Please remember that Inscope Studios is a community founded page. So please consider clicking the support link on the screen to see how you can support me and get something back in return.